today we're just continuing scene 17 and we're just going to do a little bit of quick animation using the uh, trans uh, transform mask uh, and I'll show you guys how to do that um, I have done a video on it uh, before you can find it on my page and I'll also leave it as a link uh, it's more of a step-by-step -step. I might be moving a little bit quickly for you guys here so you can always refer to that video and that will uh, show you how to do it a little bit at a slower pace. Okay, so let's go over to the left-hand side here. We're gonna be dealing with this uh, layer here or this group, the craft and inspector. Um, and let's just do a quick breakdown. So we have the front of the craft there. We got the, the lines for the head. We're keeping this separate because we're gonna be animating uh, the inspector coming off of this uh, vehicle. And we have the color or the fill then we have the lines for the body and we have the body fill as you can see there and we got just this back fill this is basically just for his neck but you can use it for any other back fill when he's moving so that will come in handy and then we have the back of the craft as well you'll notice underneath the craft we have the landing gear which is there and the landing gear is not showing but we're going to be animating that as well all right, so let's go ahead and just jump right in and start by selecting this group up here. When we select the group, like always, um, we're able to move everything uh, all together. So we can always just do our hot, uh, our hot key there. And as you can see, you can move it. If you hold shift, it allows you to move it uh, parallel, straight, and uh, up and down as well. Holding shift is good so that you can scale at a proper uh, reasonable scale so it doesn't uh, deform the whole group as a whole so let's go ahead we're just going to go down here to uh, up here sorry to the craft and inspector we're going to right click and we're gonna say add transform mask and what we're gonna do now is you see down here on the left it's broken into animation timeline animation curves um, we're gonna switch over to animation curves once we're in animation curves and keep in mind i'm using a 32 gigabyte of ram uh, in my computer so it will uh, run a little smooth but if you don't have that if you're using like a 16 gigabyte of ram um, and you're doing the transform mask it will get a little glitchy and you can even see that here uh, so just keep in mind it is a free program so it's it's not perfect but you might you might see a glitch here or there when we do this uh, transformation so we're gonna add in here a uh, a curve and this is a, a, a scalar property curve so add keyframe we're gonna press the plus and it automatically puts it on frame zero which we're at let's take a look at our frames here let's do 0 to let's say 40 so let's go back here now we're just going to backspace that out we're going to put in 40 there and now you'll see that the cursor has moved all the way to the 40 mark we're going to add in another frame there uh, actually you know what before we do that we're going to go back there let's get rid of that one if it lets us let's click here and go back and there we go so let's just get rid of that one time go back up the transform mask we've already added that in let's change the uh, okay it looks like it's not gonna let us let's go ahead and just delete that transform mask we're gonna do it again we're gonna say add transform mask and let's start over here okay so we're gonna go back to zero on our cursor going to add that frame there in and we're actually going to change the size of our inspector so we're going to select the group completely uh, you can select the transform mask or the group but we're going to do the transform mask and we're going to actually hold down the shift button and we're going to make him smaller so remember uh, in the last clip the inspector drove into the spaceship and we should probably look at that real quick um, just so you guys see exactly what I'm talking about there it is, scene 16. Let's hit play so it renders. There it goes. Okay, so the inspector drove in to the back of the spaceship. Boom, just like that. And that's what brought us here to scene 17. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna have 
the inspector showing small like this. We could probably even stretch it and go a little smaller. So make sure you're holding down shift right about here. Just drag them down a bit. And now we're going to go down here to our little box where we have our uh, keyframes. And we're going to put in 40, going to hit enter. And then what we're going to do is add in a um, the keyframe one more time. And then we're just going to enlarge our character. So we're going to hold down shift again, enlarge him, and bring him right about here. Okay, so now we're going to let that render, and we're always checking our work. So it may not be perfect, but we're always checking it. But this should go from small to big and come towards us. Kind of just make him look like he's coming towards us, just like that. Boom. Okay, and uh, we'll just let it play a few times so you guys get the picture. It's coming right towards us. There we go. So let's hit pause. So that part's good. So we know that at frame 40, he can begin to land. So let's go ahead and do a gap space here. And we're using the same transform mask. We're not, we're not using anything different. We're going to do from 40 to 50. Let's do 40 to 50. That will give us 10 frames. And we're going to add in another uh, scalar property here. There we go. And we're not going to do anything in this section here. So this is 40 to 50. What we're going to do is we're going to have the landing gear come down between 40 and 50. And from 52, let's just say, let's go back and see what we even have in here. 100. Okay, let's say 50 to 100. Yeah, 50 to 100. Let's try that. So we're going to go 50 to 100. We're going to add in one more just like that. And when he gets to 100, that's when we're going to hold down the shift button and have him come down and land just straight down, nothing fancy, just like that. And then let's go ahead, before we continue, let's just go ahead and press play and let that render and just see what that looks like. It's going to look a little bit robotic, which is OK. Um, because we're not doing frame by frame animation. Once we add in the sounds, it will it will be fine. There we go. That looks pretty cool. Okay, so now let's just do a little bit of a bump when he lands. That's going, he's kind of coming down a little bit slow. That would be nice if I had smoke coming down like from the bottom of the hovercraft, but we're not probably not going to do that. Hmm, let's, uh, let's see if we can just change that. So we're going to go back to the animation timeline, and we know that this is the end. You see this little diamond here? We're going to bring that diamond back to, let's bring it back to 72, and just see what that looks like. See if he'll come down a little bit faster for us. Okay, it's clearly stuck over here. There we go. And let's just render that. There we go. Perfect. That looks a lot better. Good. Good. That's what we want. So let's go here to back to our animation curves. And since it's going down, let's do a little bit of a bump here. So from 72 to 75, let's add in another one. And it's going to go up. So we're going to hold down shift and we're just going to slightly move him up just a little bit. A little bit of a bump. And then let's do a 75 to 80. Add in another scalar property here and bring him back down with shift. And you know what? Let's, let's do from 85, add another one. So he went back down. We're going to move him up just a smidgen. There we go. And then that leaves us at 90 for our last one to move him back down. This is going to make him look like he landed, right, or, or came down. Uh, let's hit play on that and see what it looks like. Let's render that out. Let's take a look here. There it goes. OK, press play. Down it goes. Yeah, that's really cool. I like it. So there we go. 
All right, so let's deal with the uh, landing gear. We know, let's go back and backtrack. We know the landing gear is from scene, uh, sorry, frame 40 to frame 50. So let's go to our landing gear here and let's go frame 40. And you can see the landing gear is here at the bottom. We're just going to add a duplicate frame there. There we go. And we're going to do the same thing. Actually, you know, we don't even need the duplicate frame. We can get rid of that. And we're just going to add in our transform mask there. The same thing. Add transform mask and switch over to animation curves. Go to 40. We're already selected on landing gear. So now that we're on the landing gear, we're going to pull out the transform mask and add in our scalar property. And we are going to do, it was from 40 to 50. So we're going to add in one more. We're going to put 50 in here, add in another scalar. And now we're going to drag, hold shift, and drag our landing gear down. And you can know, you'll know if it's too far because it's discolored. <laughs> because I only colored in the parts that needs to be seen. And let's try that. Let's just see what that looks like. So we're going to hit uh, play on that. And let's just run it back and see what it looks like here. And hopefully that should do it. Yeah, there we go. Nice. All right, we need to uh, bring in just a little bit of bounce for the landing gear. So let's see which uh frame it does this little up down bounce here let's scroll up take a look at this transform mask so it's actually here here so here 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 and here and here so i'll go in and do that later but you guys get the gist so let's hit play on the whole thing let's just take a look nice so that's the uh Hovercraft landing, we're going to add in some sounds, and it was just floating, right? So floating, landing, boom. Okay, last but not least, before we finish this up, um, we're just going to add in a shadow. So let's go here, add a new layer, and we can just call it shadow. There we go. And we're going to be using, again, a transform mask once again. This whole scene is going to be used with transform masks just to show you guys how to actually use them. They're very, very uh, handy. Let's just take a look here. So we're going to expand this. We're going to bring the opacity down. And we're going to make sure it's in the black. And we're just going to make one simple shadow just like this. Let's see if we can get it good. There we go. All right. So with this shadow, same thing. Right click, add. We're going to do a transform mask again. There we go. And now we're going to select that. And same thing, switching over to animation curves. We're going to add in a scalar property on zero. You can always check what frame you're on by looking at that. There it is. There we go. Um, I don't see it. Uh, just bear with me here. We want to make sure that it's there. Yeah, it is there. Okay, good, good, good. Let's pin this so we can see it. Let's go back. And if you don't see it, it means that you're not there. There we go. So it must be over here. There it is. Perfect. So let's go ahead and bring this all the way to the finish. So we know it ends at, if we go back up to this one here, it ends at 90, 90, frame 90. And we're going to go back down to our landing gear here, transform mask. And we are going to go to animation curves. And just, it's already on frame 90 here. So we're going to stay there at frame 90. Oh, we're in the wrong transform mask. That's why. Oof, I hope we didn't change anything there. Okay, here we go. So we're at, we're going to type in frame 90 here and press this button here again we're just going to add a keyframe uh, to the scalar property there and we're going to scroll all the way over to the end and we're just going to move the shadow where our character is and expand it and hopefully i haven't tested this but hopefully 
it will just look like it's moving with the hovercraft. So let's even just change the angle slightly, make it a little bit bigger. There we go. Now, moment of truth, let's go ahead and render that and just see what it looks like. Let's press play. And yes, believe it or not, the rendering for this is quite fast because like I said, I'm using uh, 32 gigs of bytes of RAM, but um, it can be slower. All right, so that shadow doesn't look great. We need to move that shadow in two parts. So we're gonna go back here to our transform mask and it's in two sections here. We're gonna pull this all the way back. Let's just see, it was between 40, here it was. So we're gonna get it all the way to here, move it from 90 to 40, right? Because we know that it's there. Let's hit play on that and see if that looks good. And then we'll change the trajectory of the, uh, the shadow in a second here. So let's let it render. That's nice. Perfect, so that actually looks pretty good. Let us get it even better. So we're gonna go here, we're gonna click on the shadow itself, hold in our shift button, we're gonna move it up. There we go. And then we're gonna go back to our transform mask and we know from this position, so nothing, no change happens between 40 and 50 so we're going to go to animation curves we're going to go to 50 here and let's just make sure that there's going to be no change here we're going to add in a yeah a scalar property perfect and then we know from 50 to 90 that's where the change happens so 50 to 90 we're going to add in that scalar property and now we can just hold down the shift button again and move it down to where it needs to be all right, let's give that a go. Press stop, zoom in a little bit here, press play. And I wanted to show you guys this because all the animation for this section is going to be transform masks. So I know you guys always say, why do I do so much frame by frame? Well, I like frame by frame animation, but transform mask is also very handy as you can see. So you'll notice the shadow seems like it still moves even after the um, hovercraft has landed. So we're just gonna go back and make one last change. So instead of moving this down for 90 frames, we're gonna push this back and we're gonna have it end at, let's do right about here before it does its little bounce. There we go. We'll hit the stop button so that it comes back and you'll notice if it's if there's yellow highlighted it plays there let's go ahead and hit play and let's see what that looks like i think we've got it done here so we come from scene 16 where the inspector flies into the back of the ship and now the inspector's coming at us landing gear comes down that's good i can i can i can live with that remember like i said before finishing the short film is the hard part if you get stuck or you think you could have done something better, um, if you can't fix it right there and then, just make sure you're always continuing on to build your story because at the end of the day, it's all about the story. Okay, there we go. So that's it for today. I just wanted to show you guys that I use Transform Mask for every single part of that animation there that's rolling. Um, we got the shadow in. We got the landing gear coming down. We got the hovercraft landing. Everything is awesome there, I would say, for that scene. And that will, we're gonna reuse this scene again, um, but uh, the next scene, we're gonna have some uh, zooming in on certain parts, like uh, shutting it off and stuff like that. Okay, all right. Nice, easy, simple. That's it for today, guys. Um, I will link the other transform mask videos here so that you guys can see how to use them. Uh, I used it for this entire animation. Okay. All right. Well, thanks for joining me today. You guys take care and enjoy your day. Cheers. Bye.